Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I have an awesome subscriber gift here on the table it's uh, Ricky uh, that has sent me two 10 terabyte hard drives from Singapore Singapore and he kind of gave me the task of finding out how this worked and I thought whoa 10 terabyte hard drives yeah send them and I probably shouldn't have done that because I think that this is gonna be one of those we didn't get anything working videos but let's get to it let's see the hard drives Ricky sent me a very long letter it's um, pages and this is because these are very special hard drives and as we are gonna probably figure out I'm gonna run into a lot of trouble here but first glance it's a very well well wrapped packaged HDST hard drive and this is a SATA drive 6 gigabits per second 7200 RPMs everything looks jolly good doesn't it 210 oh it says 10 terabyte right there we should be good to go wrong this is um first thing it's an archive drive it runs this SMR which stands for I'm looking at the paper I've written it down I can't remember stuff like that Schindel magnetic recording and um, yeah let's go to the table and try explain that again I have done this before but I think we need to see this again so the SMR uh, the S stands for these shindles shingles which is uh, what people use on their roofs and um, it means that well if this is data these strips are data there's a lot of ones and zeros along the way here I've just I've been cutting out my advertising thinkies out there and on normal drives they are just put next to each other like this the problem with hard drives is the speed when you're writing data and you're reading data well you want it to be very 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 fast so um, it, it writes the data and these lines of data are next to each other with a little somewhat a tiny little gap between them this one will go up there well it writes data and it reads data and everything is fine um, to write data is harder than to read data because when you are writing data you want to in in that total insane amount of speed that it writes data to the disk it has to put down enough power to that magnetic layer on the disk to actually turn all the magnets in that magnetic layer and well you need a bigger head for writing data than you do for reading the data so the reading of the data well if this is if this is the thing that will write the data it's this thick and you have I'm, I'm just using stuff on the shelf here and this thing oh this is too thick let's get something that's thinner okay this is not much thinner but it's thinner so this is the reading device so when you write the data you need a head for the hard drive that is this thick and when you read it again well it doesn't have to be any thicker or wider than this so um, writing the data awesome we can do that with this it needs more surface area to make that imprint into the magnetic layer and when you need to read it again well you don't need as much so this is smaller so this is how normal drives works data is put like this then you have these magnetic schindel um, drives and it, it writes the data in the same way uh, when it starts it writes this first strip and then it overlaps the next strip and writes the next piece of data like so it overlays the data so it's writing here and this reader thing that's still good enough it can do that then it continues and it overlaps again like this one overlap there it has it has written all the data it's done writing down here 
and we can still read all the data because there is enough here for the reading device to catch that data even though a fraction of it has been um, eaten off by the next data that was written. The problem arrives if we want to change some data in here. This is why these drives are awesome for archive drives. If you just need to store the data once, big, big, big files and just store them and put them away and you're not going to change anything, well, you're good to go. This is awesome. But let's say that, well, up here you've written something in here, this Intel logo thingy here, um, that's some data that we want to change. So we can't just go and write, override that because now it's gonna, it's gonna ruin the data down here. So what it has to do, it has to read all this data, all of it, put it in a piece of probably some cache on the disk here and, and kind of make cache like that, read all the data out into the into the cache, kind of, we're kind of unzipping it or something, like doing like this again, and then we can go and we can change this. Let's say that this is the data that we want to take out of there. We're just going to remove the Intel logo, that, that data, we're going to put it somewhere else. So that data strip is there, and we'll, let's say that, that that piece of data needs to go over there instead. So, and then we have to write all the other data on top of that, like this. There we are, we're done. We have written all the data. Now we can read all the data again. We can go, oh, this Intel thing is now over there. We did our thing. Um, so it's very slow to alter the data that is on the drive. That is why Schindel magnetic recording hard drives uh, are not very good for booting your OS. And it's not a great NAS drive either. If you have a NAS drive, well, well the data is, as long as the data is not changed a lot, it's, it's probably okay. But if you change the data a lot, well, this is not the way to go. And this drive becomes even more troublesome because in this drive, they have decided that this is not just an SMR drive, it's also a host managed SMR drive. All of this mingling data around, you normally, you just send the data to the hard drive and it handles it. You can kind of see on the bottom of the hard drive, it has a circuit board, it has a CPU, it has some data processing down here, it has some memory and stuff. And it can handle this. Someone, very wise, maybe, thought, well, we want the operating system to handle this. So they made these drives, which are called host managed SATA, which means that the operating system has to handle all of this. You can't just send the data to the hard drive. You have to send the data to the hard drive in a manner that it understands, which is really, really badly supported. So the drives are supported in a file system called ZBD. And that stands for zero block device. Um, and it, of course, runs on Linux. And, and this is not widely used, not even on Linux. I think this is for something very, very big, like inter enterprise equipment. Like if you have a very, very big storage system, well, someone has figured out how to use this. A, a file system in Linux called F2FS that should be able to handle these drives. I wouldn't go there. If it doesn't work on normal file systems, well, yeah, it becomes a lot of trouble. If, even if you do get it working, what happens if it fails? I, I wouldn't expect that anyone would know anything about this. And if they do, they're gonna charge you. So, um, we are gonna try something. I have this awesome IBM slash Lenovo X3650 model one with a rate controller. It's the M5015. And just for fun and giggles, let's take those two drives and put them in 
and see what the rake controller says. Ricky would really love to have these up and running in Windows. It might happen at some time that someone develops something that will be able to use it in Windows. I don't think anyone is giving this very high priority though. Why would you want to do that? We are quickly and steadily moving over to SSDs and uh, old spinning drives with archive functions and this shindle thing. Mm, I don't think it has much of a future and especially not host managed. I think this might be a dead technology. Some engineers thought that it was brilliant and then they weren't able to convince very many to go that route. All the screwing work is done. Um, why am I putting it in this old server up here? Well, it's because it's kind of the only server that I have that takes three and a half inch hard drives. In my last video, I did replace the original RAID controller in it because the original RAID controller in this X3650 Model 1 will only handle two terabyte hard drives. And well, this M5015 will handle 10 terabyte hard drives. So, I think we're good to go. Let's, um, let's power this up. I'm gonna go into the rate controller configuration BIOS thinky and we'll see how this, if it sees them. Okay, it's gonna take a while. First, it's gonna find the old rate controller and then when that has done complaining that it doesn't see anything, well, we can go into the new one. This is the old one, it's an Adaptive rate controller and it's it's gonna look for drives and after a little while it's gonna come and tell me that i found nothing and it's gonna tell us that oh it's not gonna load it's bios then and then it's gonna pass on to the hmm, lsi there we are it found nothing lsi mega rate press c to get in there and y and it hasn't found any virtual drives so yeah, let's see what we see when we get in there. Okay, the rate controller is. Let's see if it sees anything. It does. It sees two hard drives unconfigured. Good. And um, let's press one of them. See. Yeah, it complains about the link negotiation speed less than maximum supported for the. Yeah, it, it's kind of telling me that the drives are better than the the rate controller. Or the back plane. Let's see more data. Uh, hard drive and configure good. It doesn't look too bad. Link speed. Oh, that's bad. If it works, it works. I don't expect it to work. So let's um, let's go home. Best thing we can do is try and configure this. You might get lucky that someone has actually made a rate controller that will handle these drives instead of using the um, operating system to handle the disks. Well, someone might have made a rate controller that will handle host managed hard drives instead. That might be a solution. Now, I really doubt it that my old rate controller here will do that trick, but let's see how far we get and what happens. Configuration wizard. We're gonna make a new configuration there. Next, we have to be aware that it's gonna delete everything. We are aware of that. So do we wanna configure this manual or do we wanna, well, we'll do this manual and we will, let's just for fun and giggles, make it uh, do a rate zero and see if we can make 20 terabytes out of those two drives. They show up really good, so. Okay, here we can select the RAID. It tells us if we are selecting RAID 0, we get 18.1 terabytes. If we select RAID 1, we get 9 point something. So let's just for fun and giggles, select RAID 0, there. Strip size, uh, it's on the largest, it's probably fine. I usually don't change anything here, it's usually just good. So, but for these drives, it, it might be necessary to go and, oh, well, let's, let's see how far we get. There, 18 terabytes, except, and let's see, it's 
tells us about this battery backed up stuff that we need to know that if the battery is low it will slow down and stuff like that so continue continue next next finish there accept 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 yes i think it's gonna do this just fine and uh, we don't have any caching so it's fine yes we want to initialize oh failed to start operation on virtual drive so it <coughs> It did not like that. This was as expected. So going shopping for hard drives can be dangerous if you pick up one of these host managed SMR shindle thinkies. Um, let's just see this one up here. It just tells us the model number and it's disk drives and they kind of forget to tell us about this host managed thing. And if we go in there, well, there is not a word about it so um yeah nothing so if you bought that drive well you would get a bad surprise when you got that home luckily these are not that cheap right here but as these are very hard to um to use i expect that if if a lot of them become available the price will drop rapidly because people will notice well i can't use that very well I did found something interesting though, googling it, I, um, I searched for RAID controller and host managed and over here at Microsimi, Microsimi has added support for the command set extensions used by host available and host managed shingled magnetic recording SMR hard drives. Um, that might be that if you use that rate controller with the firmware that actually has that, it might be able to handle those drives. I am not completely sure, but it just it just looked very promising. It says this again over here, here support for host managed and blah, 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 same thing. So you might be able to get a rate controller that will handle those drives. Otherwise they are pretty useless. So this is apparently something that HGST and uh, Western Digital, well, same company, they have been working on for some time. The first support for it was seen in a Linux kernel back in 2014. And well, they are still trying. I've just been reading up on this and this is from June 2019. I don't know, I think it's kind of a, it's a dead way to go, but that's just me. Um, there might be some use cases. I think SSDs are gonna overtake this before it really becomes a thing. This is still spinning drives. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe for really big data, you might go this route for storing stuff that you just store once and just read. Would love to try that rate controller and see if that would do the trick. Yeah, until then, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to use these drives, bloody shame. But thank you very much to Ricky for sending them to me. It's going to be a real shame to have them sitting around doing absolutely nothing until I find something that they will actually work in. Hmm. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.